you've got a headache, right? Temperature, right? We're going to give you this, just drink it. And everybody did exactly that. We just drank what we were taught to drink. The story starts from the, um, when I was 17 years old, there was a death in the family. And um, because of this death in the family, I was required to go to village and live in a village called Kashamu, which is in the western province of Zambia. The person that died was uh, someone who was very close to me. This was my uncle who brought me up. He'd been a diplomat for a while and um, we traveled the world more or less. He developed an illness within his lungs that required him to have several operations. Medications were being prescribed to him, but then also there were medications that were being prescribed to him through the traditional medicine man. You know, I trusted everything. I trusted the medications, I trusted. You know, he's taking these things because he's going to get better. But he didn't get better. He was everything, basically. He was, he, he, he was the reason I was happy. And when he was gone, I didn't know what to do. My grandmother at the time felt that I needed to meet all the other members of the family. So it was then that she proposed I went to this, you know, to the village where everyone was. Grandma to me was always, you know, she was a kind of special friend. I wanted to be where she was going and she was going to Kashamu village and for me that was perfect. So Western provinces, people say the beginning of the Kalahari Desert. It was, as everyone had described, it was basic. Um, thatched houses with thatched grass on top. There was no books. Um, there was no electricity. You know, going to bed early. <laughs> it was a different world. So if you get sick at Kashamo village, two things happen. When I got sick, the first thing they did was try to make me vomit. If that doesn't work, and then they'll try and sort other leaves for you, and try and give you leaves or whatever it is. If that doesn't work, then they then take you to a traditional hill and say, we tried these things and they didn't work. I think it occurred once I'd reached the village. Everyone around me was almost taking the drugs that I'd seen my uncle be you know, given. That triggered all those days, all those times back when my uncle's still alive and I was giving him these medications and didn't know what they did or how they worked or why he was taking them or why one was better than the other. I went to the UK to study pharmacology with the intentions that I would take the knowledge I got from the UK and go back to Zambia and apply that knowledge. I now work for the cervical cancer program. I'm mainly researching into uh, the better way to identify women that are suffering from cervical cancer. Once the disease is, is identified, then you can begin to think, right, which medications are out there that are available that will help me relieve the symptoms associated with it. My grandmother passed away last year, and um, I remember seeing her for the first time when I came back from the UK, and she just cried. You know, she, she and I sat um, together underneath a mango tree, and she was just holding my hand this whole time. For a long time, she didn't believe she would see me again. You know, so to see me again and to see coming to see me coming back as an educated young man was extremely fulfilling for her and she always told me my son really loved you he looked after you and he would be so proud to see you what you've what has become of you my name is Katundu Katundu I am with the Zambia cervical cancer program currently I'm an intern with the next generation scientist program